Arcade Pro. We're going to the arcades at the all-new Dragon's Lair 2. Secret tip for invincibility in Mega Man 3. We'll show you how to defeat the dragon in the Immortal. And we're going to catch with the number one head knocker of them all, Thong's Revenge. All this and more on Game Pro. Let's boogie. Sorry. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Game Pro. I'm JD Roth. This is my pal, Brennan. And, uh, well, as you can see, I'm getting here a little late today, and I am really sorry. Sorry, bud. Dude, dude, what are you late for, man? I was expecting you. What happened? Um, well, you see, I was hanging back with the Game Lab guys playing this awesome new arcade game they just put in. And, uh, well, we're going to show it to you later on, and you are going to love it. Anyhow, here I am with all the video game tips and talk you come to expect week in and week out. And uh, where do we get these globs of gamer knowledge? Hey, I'll tell you where. Game Pro Magazine, the number one source for home and arcade video game information. You know it. Bean Man, what's up? Wait, dude, well, what were you and the Gonzo dudes back there in the lab playing without me for? That, that's hurtful. No, 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 no. Chill, 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 Bean Man. I got the game. We kept the game so we can play during commercials. I love this job. Oh, okay, that's cool. But, uh, dude, no commercial right now, okay? You gotta go. SWAT time, bud. SWAT oh, oh, yeah, time, and bud. as we speak, I am on my way. Let's do it. Here we go. SWAT world! Whoa! Secret weapons and tactics. Whoa! Nice ride. Here I am in my home away from home, SWAT World. And here's a tip for the third in the all-time popular game series on NES, Mega Man 3. Huh. I'll get him next time, don't worry. Now, using this tactic takes guts and a friend. So make sure you got both before you try it out. Oh, missed him again, I'll get him next time. If you execute this tactic correctly, you can achieve limited invincibility and super jumping ability in Mega Man 3. Keep in mind that the invincibility part of this trick works only in the Needle Man, Snake Man, Shadow Man, and Gemini Man levels of the game. So don't bother trying it out on any other level. The super jumping works anywhere. When you're in any of these stages, fall into a hole that would normally kill Mega Man. That's right, fall into a hole that normally kills this dude. But when you fall, hold button A on controller one and right on the directional pad on controller two. Now, keep both of these buttons down until you run out of energy. You can now let up on the A button on controller one but keep the pad down on controller two. This is where a friend comes in handy, because as long as the right directional pad stays down on controller two, you have invincibility and super jumping power. So, have your bud take care of controller two while you play the game. Now remember, the invincibility trick will only work on the Needle Man, Snake Man, Gemini Man, or Shadow Man levels, but the super jumping works everywhere. Wow, that was a lot of stuff. Let's check it out again real quick. First, fall down a killer hole on one of the stages I told you about earlier. Next, while you're falling, push down the A button on controller one and right on the pad on controller number two at the same time. Now wait until you're drained of energy. Now, have a friend hold down the controller two right pad for you while you play the game. You now have invincibility plus super jumping power throughout the entire game. Hi, I'm Greg Woodcat from Norman, Texas. Can you guys tell me how to beat the dragon in the game Immortal? My friend and I have been stuck for months. Thanks. Hey, you don't take any prisoners, do you, bud? I think you fried at least two or three of the game lab's best over here, but we got the answer, so check it out. Use the blink spell six times to avoid the dragon's first six flame bursts. Now, while this will tire him out, he's not done yet because there's still one final long blast to come. Wait for his second inhale and then use the flame protection scroll. Next, hold the amulet up to the light, but dude, do not read the runes. Runes? Okay, I know you may be asking, dude, what's a rune? Ah, I bet you guys thought I said prunes. Psych! I didn't. I said runes. And I happened to check in with our runologist, and I learned that runes are ancient inscriptions which tell you your future. And if I don't get on with answering your question, I think I know what my future's gonna be. Ouch! So as I was saying, hold the amulet up to the light, but do not read the prunes. I mean runes. 
This will frighten the dragon and keep him from attacking you while you deal with your next problem. The wizard Mortimer, who's gonna try and fry your behind with his lightning bolts. Bogus. Now here's how you handle this punk. Use the statue scroll three consecutive times to defend against the lightning bolts. Morty will do his best to fake you out after the first three bolts, and you can always tell when the fakes are coming if you watch the dragon's head because the dragon will always follow the direction of the lightning. See? The Mortimer still has another two bolts in his arsenal, and one more nasty trick. So again, use your statue scroll three times to defend. Thinking he's got you by the power cord, Mortimer will declare, You have no more defenses. Prepare to die. Right after he lays that one on you, use the magnetic hand spell to suck the amulet from his hand to yours and sit back and watch as the dragon cooks a Mortimer shish kebab. All right, way to go, bud. Good question. You'll be getting your free Game Pro T in the mail. Thank you. Now, if you other gamers have a hot one, put it on video, send it to us, get gutsy. We'll give you the address at the end of the show, okay? You gain invincibility in Target Earth when we return on Game Pro! Whoa, whoa, space, the final frontier. Oh, uh, sorry, wrong game. If you're a Genesis player, then you gotta be a fan of Target Earth, one of the all-time greats for the 16-bit game. Well, here's two mega tips that'll keep your space cruiser in business for as long as you want to play the game. Game! Whoa! The first tip is major easy pull-off. Now, even though Target Earth is a one-player game, plug in the Player 2 controller. Once your spaceship is moving, just hit the Start button on the Player 2 controller. I now pronounce you invincible. You'll still take on some damage from the hits, but your ship will never blow up. Now, if you prefer the challenge of a destructible spaceship, but want to keep the game going forever, here's a Target Earth tip that'll give you all the continues you want. Okay, check it out. To make this trick happen, you have to at least make it to level two. Now. Here's the part that takes some nerves, so listen up. You gotta take the plunge and die on purpose, that's right. Next, go back to the options screen and press start. When you see the babe appear with the words continue up, leave the options screen. Now you're back in the title screen, and if you did this one right, you should have nine continues, way to go. By the way, when you get down to two continues, you can run this trick all over again for another nine. gone before, right? Yeah! Absolutely. All right. Let's check out what the gumballs in the lab have to say about our Star Trek for the NES. Now, if you're a Trekkie or an ex-Trekkie or a recovering Trekkie, or even if you've gone through Trekkie rehab, listen up, because there's no question that you need to get your thumbs on this cart for another dose of Starship Enterprise. Here is the story. The Enterprise has been sucked through a rip in the fabric of space and is now boldly traveling where no man has gone before. Kirk and the crew's mission is to repair the space hull and make it back to Federation space. Of course, the ship's dilithium crystals have burned out and there isn't enough power to warp out of the unknown zone, or for that matter, to even maintain orbit from a hours. Okay, the only hope for Spock, Ohora, Chekhov, Sulu, Bones, and the rest of the crew is to explore the closest planet they can find in search of the crystals they need to continue their journey. In the game, you'll visit at least four planets, engage Romulans in battle, make off with a cloaking device, and run through a number of other missions necessary for success. All of this happens over seven sections involving time travel, exploration, detective work, and major battles with familiar Star Trek baddies.
So, how did our crack team of Game Lab gargantuans rate Star Trek? Remember, the Game Labbers check our games out for graphics, sound, challenge, and fun factor. Now, while the Game Lab garbanzo beans like the graphics, especially the characters representing the original Star Trek cast, they were kind of disappointed with the backgrounds.